This is Bang Bang Bang. The Jam Jam Afro Beats Show. So I was talking to DJ Slick on the drive time. He said, nah, these guys have been here like 14 times. Wow. <laughs> I can't even count. So. <laughs> mm. It's you, good to be back though. But you're not really been here until you've been on the Jam Jam Afrobeat show. <laughs> yeah, I'm there for politics, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for me? Because I'm going to go in with the politics. I'm ready, man. Look, I've done research about it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm ready for you. Yeah, well, you know, it's actually been over a year since I last interviewed both of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. The baddest artist producer duo in the UK. <laughs> Come and grace us. Yeah, it's a duo. Yeah. We're not a group now. You, well, you may as well be, really. Yeah, I'm an individual. Buy as an individual as well. <laughs> last time, I don't know if you remember this, the last time I interviewed you, you said his. No, no, Bio's music said the whole reason you got your signed was because of him. Yeah, Because definitely. of Bio's music. Yeah, true, yeah definitely. True stories. And then by then, right, by my logo, you said that Bio's was your boo. <laughs> right, <you're> <laughs> See, this is the reason why you just, like, you just don't say certain things. You know, like. <laughs> nah, man, it's, it's, it's brotherly love now. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, Mologo, you're not a baddest, right? You're not a baddest singer. Self proclaimed. Self proclaimed. Baddest UK Afrobeats artist in the UK. You know, that's the vision. That's the vision. Yeah. So why well, you you don't gonna you don't have much confidence. You don't want to say that you're it already. Um, I feel like the way. Life is, you know, you can't, if you keep blowing your own on and everyone is blowing it for you as well, you blow out quickly. You might have to take it to the electrician afterwards. You know what I mean? But if people are blowing <laughs> your own for you, you haven't even touched your own yet. So imagine when you now turn this on. So if you're not the baddest, who's badder than you? God. Uh, let's talk about UK Afrobeats. I don't know. Has he, has he released a single? Has God released a single yet? Yeah? God is everywhere. He's <laughs> badder than me. <laughs> so who, yeah, who's better than you? Like, who do you rate? In let's keep it UK. Um, let me keep it real. Uh, I I feel like the reason why I said I'm the baddest, I'm the baddest in my own lane and what I do as an artist with what I bring out, the type of music I bring out. So I don't believe I'm in competition with anyone. The, per the person I'm in competition with is myself, and that is trying to better myself as an artist and as a, a human being. So, Mr. Bio's music. What up? What up? We were playing last night. And, like literally, the whole club went crazy when they played. Look oh. what the cat dragged in. Oh yeah. Because you produced that track, right? Gigs. Yep. How, so tell me a little bit. How did you get started producing with gigs? Um, I went to school with um, um, with a guy whose brother owns a studio, and that's the same studio that Gigs was recording at. So, like, we just mm. bump heads, and I got the phone call to drop some beats down, and you know, started from there. Man. What do you think he liked about your beats? I have no idea, man. He just, he just, you know, there's always like that one person that he just seem to get along with every time, even even as an artist. So you know I'm saying, so I don't, I probably, I, I can't really figure it out, man. Mm -hmm. Because we've done like different type of stuff, like we've done the trap stuff, then the commercial stuff. So there's always like different sounds coming in. So if you had to choose between doing sort of the UK rap grime scene and the UK Afrobeat scene, which one would you choose? Uh, I choose music, man. No, you got to choose one of those things. <laughs> I didn't give you a third option. <laughs> that was your only option. Uh, uh, between the two, uh, hey, I love UK rap, man. So you just go with that, right? Yeah, yeah, I so love UK rap. So my logo, you're UK out. So are you going to just ditch my like that? Nah, I mean, I ain't ditching. You listen to the baddest. That's not, uh, like, it doesn't sound like the instrumental that's playing yeah, right definitely, now. Definitely, definitely. Not. <laughs> So tell us about, okay, you obviously at the moment you're promoting The Baddest Remix featuring Gigs. How did this track come about? Should I answer that? Someone go, man. Mo logo, go for it. Basically, somebody got to Bayer's nerves. Little last nerves. A real comment on Not Just Okay Now, when we dropped Mary J. And then I think someone said, I can buy his music, you know, a well-known producer. I'll be doing an Afrobeat track with Mo logo and that. So he just called me up like, wow, they, didn't think, they don't think we can do better. So it's like we have to show the world that not just not just that person, but the world that we don't really do music just for Africans. Is is a is a everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's not just for one color. So how about yeah. describing back to bios now? How how would how did you get gigs on it? Obviously, I know that's affiliation, but like, mm. has he always been interested in the Afrobeat scene? Nah, never. Mm. No, it's, I doubt he even listens to it. So how did you persuade <laughs> him? So it's just one of those things that as soon as the record was done, I just kind of sat down and thought, you know what, like, it, like this it would be really, really good if we get him on there. Mm. So and even he called me after a late, yeah, after he done the verse as well, like, 
oh, like you and Edgy knew exactly what you was doing. Mm -hmm. I said, like, come on, man. Like, if, if he's talking about the baddest in the UK, then talking the artist is like, wait. Yeah. And you're just dropping the video for it. Mm -hmm. Who, who's in the video? Everyone, man. Everybody. I know I did inside the video, Sha. Why are they there? So, <laughs> how, what's the video going to look It's not dropped yet, right? No. no, no. What's it going to look like? When, when is it dropping, first of all? We don't know yet, so, but it, it's very, very soon. And what's it going to look like? Different. I love It's just it's exactly what the song's about. You know, it's like trying to differentiate yourself from everyone else. Like, I'm in my own lane. Right. So that's what's now. Just, just show. So are you are you going to be dancing with a girl? You got, who's the number one? Who's the what do they call them? The number one video of Vix, Vixen on the set or whatever. <laughs> Nobile, she's like Nobile. Yeah. She, oh, that's the CEO dancer. Yeah, she gave me a lot of you know confidence and energy. She made you feel like the baddest. I'm for real. <laughs> she knows how to bring that out. So, know, so. so was there any um, off-screen chemistry? What, what what's off-screen chemistry? I don't know science. I mean, I didn't do did you science. feel anything? I didn't know where the baddest is on iTunes. Did, did she beat your pangolo? The baddest is on iTunes. The baddest is on iTunes. <laughs> I just wanted to find out actually, um, kind of how did you get into doing the Afro beats thing? Because I know initially you'd featured on some UK like urban tracks, yeah. obviously like teaming up with Bayers as well. So how did you kind of jump on Afro beats? Um, it was more of looking at the industry when I was listening to the, for the likes of the Davido and then I, and I felt like I had a chance to be a part of it and with what I, what I used to do before with the R&B thing and I felt like I could fuse both of it together and give a unique sound and that was the decision we didn't choose. So have you got any like tricks up your sleeve you know in terms of like even changing the sound again or anything like that? If I tell you you'll not be surprised. Come on you have to give us something. I can't tell you but let, I just let you know that more music is coming and it's if you think the baddest is what it is then just get ready. Yeah, because like initially with the baddest, you put out um, the track without the gigs feature, and then you yeah. put out the gigs, yeah. the gigs one. Like what was yeah? What made you kind of? Change I feel your like mind? with the management and with with the idea is like we don't want to come out as if you know we are rubbing up people's shoulders. So it's like let's push Molo Molo as a artist himself. Like we like you know what I'm trying to say he done it by himself, and then after that you know collaborations and get out there. So what's unusual that we actually, this is the first time we've got a Top of the Flops artist in the studio. Mm -hmm. Who's that? <laughs> it's Mr. Bonago! <laughs> Top of the Flops. Is that a category? Wait one second. You're actually, we made you our ones to watch for 2014. Okay. And obviously you know I've been supporting you from day one. Yeah. But you... And me. Okay, so yeah. Let we, shout, we, 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 we. Even our Bang Radio playlist did the baddest. Thank you very much for that. Um, but yeah, you we did obviously. I'm sure it didn't fail to escape your attention. We did a top of the flops feature yeah. before. We uh, we talked to, uh, with Ware and Sarah last week. That, uh, we talked to them, and we we want to talk to all of the UK Afrobeats guys about it. Mm -hmm. What did you make of it? Obviously, for people that didn't listen to the show, we did a review of the year. We did the biggest tracks and the flop tracks, and we put what track was it from Malogo that we put in? Bubugaga. Yeah, Boo Gaga. No, but what was the oh, one? The, no, we just said that, you know. No, 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 the Fuse track, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, what they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what they want was Flops. No, no, no. no. Uh, 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 ones to watch. Uh, I yeah. See. Exactly. And then that's what we said, but then obviously we put Boo Gaga in mm -hmm. the, the Flops track. When was this? Did Kamal no. Logan acting like he doesn't no, know what we're talking about? I, obviously, I found out later on, but I was mm -hmm. busy in the studio working, man. So, so what did you think? So, so what what made you get on that track? Did you feel like it was a flop at the time? It wasn't a flop. The song was actually a good song. So you rate you rate the track? Definitely. How highly do you rate it? I give it a nine. Is it better? Than, is it better than the baddest? Come on, man. Not better than the baddest. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I felt like the song done what he had to do with the artist on it. He gave it different flavor. I came in with my flavor. Two K did his thing. May seven done done a thing. So. So, do you think we're wrong to make it a flop? I don't say you're wrong. It's your opinion. You know, opinion matters at some time, and sometimes it doesn't matter. So, mm. with me, the song was good. Um, it gave me a little recognition, and it, it, it helped push me a little bit, so I'm grateful for that. Mm. So, I can't call it a flop. So, what do you think? Let's ask Byro's music this as well. What did you think about the whole thing of, like, of that Top of the Flops fiasco? 
Like, did you think it was like? Um, well, what did you think first of all? So I swear the band was there as well. Yeah, yeah, the band. Yeah. Was there. So for me, it's not just the same way somebody left a comment or not just okay. And then we made like this. It's like everybody needs to use like whatever, like um, what's the word? I'm Negative. Negative. No, it's not, yes, whatever feedback you're getting from people, because at the end of the day, it's like if I complain to Tesco about something, mm. they have to solve the problem. Or as the or other brands are available. So it's like I didn't get what the whole argument was over. Mm. For example, Mo will play me a track, and I'm like, I don't like that. Mm. Like, do it. I don't like it. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So for me, it was just like whoever that was picked in that category, or you got to do it just basically the next record that you bring up. Yeah. For example, the band, you said that mm. other track was a flop. The new one, it came to Baba everywhere. Is that it? So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we is the baddest. Mologo <laughs> came up with the baddest. We're still waiting for the others to come up with the next record. So, yeah. exactly. That's I like that. Basically, so what? So, I took it? myself exactly. out, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I see that, but it's true because I wanted to address it face to face to the artist mm. because. On Twitter, it kind of was made into a beef thing. Like, but I'm thinking, yo, this is we. we it was constructive. It was music journalism for I, us. I love that. Yeah. You know what? Well, well, one thing Nani said was, people need to stop following each other around, man. Like that's the that's the one thing that that I kind of feel like. Just because it's somebody that makes a song, do I have to support it? Mm. The same way, I wait for everybody's honest opinion. Like, look, I'm not gonna go into the studio. I make a record that's all right. I'll make a good song, but if the song becomes like successful, then good for me. But just because certain people are like putting out songs, you feel like, yeah, oh, that song is banging, man. Like we just need to be more honest with each other. Like mm -hmm. that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And with Afrobeat, like no one's ever honest with you, man. So why why do you exactly? That's what I was gonna say. Like if maybe in another genre of music, it wouldn't have created such a, a storm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it was? taken in that way in our UK Afrobeat scene? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a African culture not to tell the truth to each other. Yeah, mm. doing a lot of truth is like, they feel like you saying you don't like the song or you don't do this, it's like you've already brought them down. But the way I see it is like, it's, it's good because it helps me to be better. So the next time you hear me, you're going to come to me like, oh my, my look, I love this, your song, you did very well. So I don't see it as a bad thing. The, the top of the flop thing can carry on going. It doesn't. It doesn't do nothing to anyone. I was laughing, man. I'm not even. <laughs> I was laughing at what everybody was saying, and I just kind of felt like, you know what, well, this is. Did like... they know that? Did they know that me? You was what's happening to that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No one knows what goes on behind the closed doors. <laughs> 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 so, no, it's funny enough because I didn't actually. When we did the feature, I didn't really look into who was on the track, because for me, like. Even though you was on that track, I don't. That's not your track. You know what I mean. You don't own that track. Yeah. That's been brought to you, and it's a collaboration. Thing, the funny thing, people think that was my song. Really? Yeah. Because you're the baddest. <laughs> you're the one everyone remembers. <laughs> top five. What's the top five? Is it uh, what they're doing or their abilities? It's or it's their song. No, it's everything. Everything. It's, it's airplay, uh -huh. hype, packaging. Okay. Um, lyrical content, beats, producers, okay. everything. It's so, the what whole... is your top? I want to see. I want to hear. Uh, my, yeah, my top probably would be. God, I don't want to miss anyone out. Fuse, Mr. Silver, um, probably Dizzy. Dizzy. You're, you're, uh, I'm not trying to. Wait, wait. Uh, Ware, and I don't know who else is there. Who else Bro. have I missing? Is Lola Ray counted as UK? Yeah, she's UK. Probably Lola Ray. Uh, am I missing out? Who have I missed out? Five. Five. Wait, who am I missing out? No, I said who am I missing out? <laughs> what, Wait, so is, that, is that your cat in the category? Your category? Yeah, my personal yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. I don't even need, need to. I'm yeah. on lane. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Oh wait, I missed you. I'm on lane. <laughs> <laughs> He said top six. Was he like, no, I would obviously. I'd put you in the top. We, you were, that's why you and I wanted to watch. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like being in your own lane service is the best. You mm. know, because then no one can do what you do. Mm. Who would you put above? You mean, you, do, you want, do you want to tell you my list? Yeah, yeah let's say your list. No disrespecting anybody, but right now it's Fuse, Molo, Girl, Silver. Okay, so cool. we said five. Three. So you got two more to go. No, according okay, so to you the, want it, so okay. according to the um, criteria. Criteria. That's like, it. Top three. And if you're talking, because I never look at it from the Afrobeat side. Uh, so you guys were there last night um, for OK Nigeria, Whiskey Mist, 
very sick DJ lineup. What did you think about that? That was myself, Edu, Sean, Shawnee B, and um, Fifi. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it yesterday night, man. It was really, really good. Who are your top five DJs? <laughs> <laughs> right, let me keep it real. <laughs> are you fishing for compliments, yeah. Jab Jab? No, I just thought it was a link. I was a segue. Okay. okay. DJ Edu, Abranti, DJ Jam Jam. Uh, that's a lie, not a lie. Um, unbeatable. Unbeatable. Um, you're not just talking about radio, you're talking about people that actually go outside. Yeah, and yeah everyone. Neptizzle. Neptizzle. Okay, that's a good fight. Bias, I wanted to hear Bias's. Okay, let's do Bias. Yeah, yeah Eddie, Abranti. Wait. Wait Abranti is not a DJ. He is a DJ. He DJs places as well. Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a radio personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he DJs as well in places as well. I've Does he? I've never heard him DJ. DJ. Yes, I've seen pop. He's sending me bare posters. Like, really? When oh. he's going out to... But you know Photoshop. Like, Photoshop can no, no, do no. magic these days. No, he actually... He, he, <laughs> nah, he does shows over... over well, I just, I just have to figure... I just... Because, like... Yeah, I'm yeah. basing it on what I do as well, innit? Because I kind of DJ as well. So the people that always catch my eyes... Edu... Uh, DJ Larry... Jam Jam... Uh, unbeatable... Who else? Unbeatable, <coughs> unbeatable, unbeatable. And. What, DJ Untouchable? No, no, he's. <laughs> wow, we're, we're really going for people and tonight. Netizen, netizen, netizen. I'm basing it based on like people <coughs> that I see do certain things and I want to do that. Okay. So Everybody's top for me, man. As long as you're doing your thing and it's working for you, you're on top, man. So it's not about anyone being on top of nothing. That's a good way of him saying sorry for what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it personal. Diplomacy. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think people should take it personal, man. Come, we're all friends, you know, at the end of the day, so... Yeah. Biles, I want to um, ask you something, actually. Yeah, go I'm going to switch it up for a little yeah. bit right. and not talk about Afrobeats. Mm -hmm. So because you've got backgrounds in, like, let's say, UK urban, as you call it, I want to know who you're rating right now in the UK scene. In the UK scene? The funny thing is, I'm actually writing like more singers. Like, names? Want some names? Uh, I heard, um, is it Raheem Bakari this morning? Oh, Raheem, yeah, uh, yeah, Raheem Bakari, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, Miss D. Yeah, Miss D. Uh, who else have I been? Um, yeah, I heard about Jay Warner the other day as well. Yeah. Okay, you just found out about Jay Warner? Yeah, but like, how come dude, you're a bit late? Uh, Jangam's just looking lost to the side. I listen to a lot. Doesn't, doesn't I'm know. not actually because Alice. I <laughs> listen to DJ Slickshaw, so he <laughs> keeps <laughs> up to date <laughs> on the UK stuff. And his, his UK pick of the week is Raheem Brakari. Is it? Brakari. I like that guy. Okay, yeah. there we go. Okay, so so he, you know, even Jam Jam does. He's doing something good there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So um, wait, wait, wait. I did, wait. What about rap? Let's just hear rap. Rap, rap, rap. I'll go give it to my boy Nara Mali, man. Okay, you know what, that is perfect. That was great. Right. Like, you read my mind. I was going to say, well, we've been having this debate, or I've been having this debate with a few people. Because, uh, yeah, for people that don't know as well, before I kind of got into the real kind of doing stuff in Afrobeats, I was kind of like proper like grime heads and mm. yeah, doing stuff with urban Just people. Stop calling it grime, please. Just call it grime, like, UK hip hop. Yeah, hip hop. Grime rap, is different to everything. what we do. No, I'm just saying, like, the whole thing, I was involved in the whole thing. Yeah. So, like, I've had a few people talking to me and asking me about Naira Mali and talking how he is doing Afrobeats. Now I've been debating this this thing. I wanna hear your views on it. Naira can rap. But is it Afrobeats? No. Can you it's explain why it's not? Alright. First and foremost, uh, you had Grime MC speaking Patua back then. Were they were they Jamaican eyes? No there wasn't. There was Gram Gram MC. So Naira comes in, he's got Nigerian accent rapping on a track. He was still rapping. So at the end of the day, there's only one thing he's doing. He's rapping. So he's not Afrobeat. Yeah. Okay. So guys, everyone out there that we're having a debate with, you've heard it from Bias no, now. Rap I don't have to say it again. No, I, I agree. I agree with that one because yeah. actually I think the only thing that was kind of Nigerian about it was his name. <laughs> you know, the, the Naira yeah. thing. Yeah. I actually didn't know what his background was at all. I just listened to the song mm -hmm. and, and I was like, no, this is not Afrobeats. Then someone was telling me it's Afrobeats. I'm like, nah, nah, that's not Afrobeats. It's not, it yeah. dropped on a, the yeah. instrumental was, um, it was, uh, a, it was, was a bash my reading. Yeah, because yeah. like, that's something I've been talking about quite a lot. People, like you said, people are hearing like the, the different accent, maybe some words, and then saying it's Afrobeats. I and the I fact think that he's doing at the that. moment, people are kind of putting mm -hmm. any label on Afrobeats as long as it's kind of got some kind of African connection to it. 
I think people just say that because it's African. Um, you know, yeah, we, we might as well just yeah. call Grand yeah. Bashman then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. Very true, by his music. So anyway, let's go back to last night. So who was the who would be part of me of last night? There were I saw uh, the footballer Ada Bayar Bayor uh -huh. yeah. dancing uh -huh. away. Did you see him dancing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That guy, that guy loves dancing. Man. Yeah. It's not. There's every time I see him in such events, he's always a happy guy dancing. He doesn't mm. feel like I'm here. Don't come stand next to me. It, it mingles with everyone, so that's a good thing. Down to earth guy, yeah. definitely. So like I said, we had um, you guys on the show before, and you did a little tribute. Let, do you know what? Let me just play this. This is Mo, this is Mologo talking right now. Yeah, I've done the tribute. And wait, listen. You can hear him, Mr. Mologo. <laughs> yeah. Mologo did. Uh, is speaking right now, and this one was dedicated to Verbal Vixen. Really? When is that you? <laughs> um, Nani Verbal Vixen, and I mean, this is for you. Ooh. So, oh. you know, it's like this. <laughs> Nani, yeah, my baby, I'm a guy, in a guy. The way you do me, I don't lost my senses. Oh, I did. The way you do me, I go spend my money. And you don't scatter my head, scatter my head, scatter my head away. You don't scatter my head, scatter my head, scatter my head away. Ah, wow, yeah, Noni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now don't be shy, come from over. Can you see your logo? Can you see your love here? She's blushing. Remember this. She what said, did you do that? She's blushing. That was I. She's blushing. She's blushing. Gozzy. Man. Uh, man, you set me up, man. I just thought Thanks I see, logo, I see Noni's blushing, boy. I know. She's like, I don't blush much, but I'm trying to do it. I remember that day now. It was a long time ago. It was February February last year. I remember the date, you know. Valentine's! <laughs> oh my God, Valentine's! It, it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, I listened to the show back again yeah. in research to see what we talked about before. Yeah. And when I had that, I was like, wow, I'm going <laughs> to use that as a clip today. I did that as a drop yeah. for my thing. <laughs> So yeah, we want to talk about celebrity weddings and actually do we really care about celebrity weddings and what's all the fuss about? And actually, is it right for celebrities, particularly the African celebrities, to go abroad and have their wedding? Is it unpatriotic? Is it right? Is it not right? So yeah, let us know on the Twitter as well at We Are Bang Radio. Okay, um, with that, somebody made a comment. So they brought out a picture saying, you know, um, it's we're going to have a party before the wedding in Dubai on Friday. Now, somebody got upset, or it's his opinion, and Banky said, Such comments irritate me. We use the platforms we have to promote Nigeria all the time. We invest our money in Nigeria. You don't know the number of Nigerians we employ, the number of kids we put through school with scholarships, the number of health care bills we pay for people. You don't know the number of Nigerian companies we bank, we bankroll and float, or the number of ideas we invest it's hard enough finding happiness in this world two people should be able to celebrate it whenever and however they like it plus they already did their traditional wedding in nigeria they should be free to do whatever they want to do with their white wedding and um he just stated basically he was just you know trying to state what um the vacation and the honeymoon and everything he was just because he's the best man, so he was trying to support. He's at Banky W. Yeah, he was the best man for the wedding. Okay. And if you read the comments on Bella Niger, people went... Okay, let's get some feedback right now. Monogo, what do you think about that, the whole honest, wedding man, situation? I won't lie to you. Anybody can go anywhere and go and marry. It has nothing to do with anyone. So when you get married, are you I'm, married already? No, I'm not married. Right. <laughs> do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm very single. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you get married, would you do an abroad one like or what like if you could have your way, where where would you do your wedding? If if my wife wants to marry in Nigeria, we'll marry in Nigeria. If she wants to marry in in, in Cyprus, we'll, that's where we go. I don't I don't feel like you need to because I'm Nigerian. I have to. I must go marry in Nigeria. Why? Would Would you make it public? Is that what? The wedding, would you make the wedding public? Where I'm, where I'm doing the Yeah, like you have the whole, like, you know, the, yeah. the paparazzi there, the magazines, the journalists. There's nothing wrong with that. Because mm. I feel like... These people, man, it's just bitterness, man. Because instead of you to be happy with the two people marrying each other, that why you focus on where they're married? If you want, if you're so 
angry about that. Buy your own plate ticket. I'm gonna meet them there. <laughs> and you know the funny thing immediately he posted it and Banky commented he deleted the picture so I'm like why are you being a hypocrite right. like but he people have their you know people are happy they did they did um, a big traditional wedding in Nigeria and it looked like a white wedding so why do you want to get involved you know what people don't understand like when my popsy I call him my popsy two-faced that is wedding I was happy because I like I want to my wedding to be like like that if not even better because Instead of you to be like, yo, I'm really appreciative of these people that they're hating. Why? On the internet when they're making money. That makes sense. Shout out to Shopsy listening in. Um, he's actually saying, um, so I can't even see my screen now. Yeah, he's saying um, it's their wedding so they can, they can do it anywhere they like and no one complains when others do it. Right. Thank you. I got I got something to say today. But it was music. I understand where the person is coming from because first and foremost, but personally, the person possibly bought to a savage CD, so he's invested in the wedding somehow, some way. So they've got every right to say that. But I would appreciate if some of us is is not down to uh, to the musicians to to give Nigeria the the look that Dubai has. You know what I'm saying. So musicians are not making the kind of money that you can change a whole city. That's impossible. Mm. So when these people do do these things, it's a picture that you want to remember. And I'm pretty sure the person that wrote that comment wouldn't like their wedding to be is a village in somewhere, somewhere where it's not a nice surrounding. So I don't think it's 18. It's just one of those things that they would love to be in that position as well. It's just that the infrastructure of Nigeria doesn't allow many people to have that kind of life. I understand what you're saying, by, but because they, they're not in that position, does that mean you have to talk? Negative. Yeah, about the same way somebody, somebody wrote bios music, uh -huh. da 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 da, uh -huh. and what did that make us do? No 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 no. You have to understand what the person is saying. Bring it back to Nigeria. We can all do it. You know what I'm trying to say. You take it over there. Not every one of us can reach out there. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So now that person might want to do the same thing as well, but because the pocket is not to that level. They're, in a way, that like I see every comment as a prayer. You may not see it like that. I see every comment as a prayer. And banking didn't really have to write that long story, man. I think I think this brings up the issue of you know, is it right for the media to promote you know like lavish weddings, lavish lifestyle in Nigeria, particularly or in Africa, um, especially when um, I think the, the statistic is something like um, over sixty percent of people live you know in poverty, which is classified as less on less than one dollar a day. So you know, you know, is it actually correct that sh they should be promoting such things? I've got a question for you guys here. So everyone's saying this. Um, Africanized can't promote that. If Diddy wake up one day and be like he wants to go to um, Paris just for lunch, would anyone tell Diddy there's people suffering? <laughs> they won't say that. <laughs> it's, it's an African mentality. Well, hey, like, let me give you another example. Wayne right. Rooney and Colleen, Colleen Rooney, they got married for $7.7 .7 million allegedly in mm -hmm. Genoa like, on a $120 million yacht and no one said Did anyone anything. Anyone in the UK say, go and marry Crystal Palace. Well, Kim no. Kardashian going to Paris you know I mean? to get married, it doesn't mean that she doesn't love right, Let's Let's understand this first. Yeah? <laughs> right. mm. is one, yeah, UK. Yeah. This, the two other weddings are in the US. Yeah. There is what well, I'm probably guessing at the top of my head. There are people over there who can do that. You know what I'm trying to say? You're talking about people who, like, they appreciate, like, they're the reason why we're all here right now. If those people don't support the music back there, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. Yeah, but I'm going on the, the comment you made. You said these people in Nigeria support their money the same way Rain Rooney a lot of people that buy the tickets are gonna watch him at the stadium and when they still lose matches or then win cup <laughs> and he goes and marry nobody gets angry <laughs> right? but, but, but isn't the argument actually say like thing. if any of us if we wanted tomorrow we can just go to Paris yeah, and be like, like a Kanye West and get married it, but we know in Nigeria you can't, you can't just can't get visa that. like that number you, one you cannot and you can't that, just so go and Get married. I'm so saying like by them doing that doesn't mean pushing it in their face. I'm saying by them doing that doesn't mean they don't care about the country or if they could help and oh yeah, heal the not. world. They, they won't they won't do it. So don't single that out because they're famous and they choose to go have a good time some with their family and friends. Doesn't I, mean nothing. The thing is, um I have in fact my friend went there and he told me they had one hundred and fifty guests. Exactly. They didn't have people that, you know, 
bought ticket or so did know. they fly all of those 150 guests or yeah. did everyone pay for their everybody own flights everybody paid for their own flights they had um a program but in the programs you don't pay for your then they don't pay for your meals and the rest of them so they went on the boat cruise they did so many activities but they just had 150 guests now if you look at the um pop, like the amount of people that went for the traditional wedding I'm sure they can't afford because it's a white wedding it's meant to be family friends and if you even notice most of the people that came were their friends mm -hmm. not even their parents friends because their parents had like 10 guests each and that was it and the rest of them were their friends yeah but you gotta think about this I'm pretty sure that guy wanted to be there so you can't blame him, man, for leaving a comment like that. You know, that's not what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? He you wanted to eat cake too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I want to be the guy going to Dubai. Then I want to be at the wedding. You see what I'm saying? Oh. You can't like you can't condemn a man for like for wishing. Uh -huh. That and was a wish. In the same way, you cannot condemn a man for doing as he wishes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bye. Thank you. Doesn't need to be the <laughs> He was his best man. He was his best man. Bio is like you going to go and marry someone now. So and so I'll tell them, yes. Yeah. The next time Banky drops a record and I say that record is not all that, is he going to leave a comment? But there's some people that will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just leave the guy to play. Like we don't have to justify yeah. our actions to anyone else, right? <laughs> Actually, let me, if I put in my two senses, I don't really have a problem where people do want to do their weddings. But I do have a problem when it becomes less celebration and more public relation. Yeah. And it's more of a, an exercise in promotion. And you've got that. And then you are promoting a politics of envy when everyone's putting up Instagram videos of how great your life is. And th that, that is not their fault, by the way. But it's a, the culture we live in today. It, it could cause a problem for society if we live such an open world of Instagram. I know myself, my life is not bad. But when I scroll through my Instagram feed, I'll be like, damn, why am I, why am I not on holiday? Or why am I not in a first class? seat here or first class seat there. Well, Jan -Jan, what people fail to realize, I know I'm young, I'm, I'm still new, I'm a young boy, but what people don't understand is that if Tewa and Bills had done their marriage in Nigeria and I'm telling you people still say, I can, how come they cannot afford to travel out <laughs> to go and dig <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it doesn't make sense. Oh, so what? So they can't call their friends in the industry to put money together and fly out to go and have a good time. Why are you doing it in Nigeria for? Mm -hmm. That people talk. That's what he's meant to the internet, yeah, they will talk, they will type. Simple. The Jam Jam Afrobeats show.